seat belts, airbags, automatic lane drifting detection warning systems, cars these days are safer than ever. But it wasn't so long ago that you could strap yourself into a thousand horsepower death machine and hurtle into the wall faster than on his way to your mom's house. Today, we venture into the world of danger and frequent incineration with a list of five exotic sports cars that are actively trying to harm you. And the last one, it, it's not surprising at all. Like, you're gonna see this coming from a mile away. When internal combustion becomes external, that's how you know something went wrong. Ferrari wanted their 458 Italia to turn heads, but this probably isn't what they meant. The 4.5 liter naturally aspirated V8 sports car was the face of this Italian brand from 2009 to 2015, and their most popular model for many of those years. But what Ferrari didn't realize is that the 458 had a fatal flaw, which could cause it to burst into flames when driven hard. Within the first two years, Ferrari started popping like fireworks. Paris, Switzerland, California, Miami, all around the globe, this 200 mile per hour supercar was randomly transforming into an expensive bonfire. The catalyst was eventually traced back to bad adhesives used on the rear wheel liners. Given how close those liners are to the warm engine bay, it's really not a huge surprise that they went up in smoke so often. Ferrari ended up having to recall more than a thousand of their remaining 458s to remove the glue and replace it with something a little less exciting. Screws. They replaced it with fancy Italian screws. Why did we not think of this in the first place? In a show of good faith, they also replaced the handful of cars that were lost due to this unfortunate little mistake. I have a confession to make. I have a terrible history with golf carts. I'm, I'm being dead serious here. Of the two golf carts I've ever driven, I crashed both of them in some horribly embarrassing way. See, I expected to drive like a car, but then the pedals are so much bigger and I, I get mixed up and hit the gas instead of the brake. Okay, it happens. But it turns out, I don't have to be embarrassed about this little problem. Because back in the 1980s, Audi did something so much worse. It all started in 1986 when CBS released a hot investigative report about the Audi 5000. In it, they exposed the German sedan for having some mechanical design flaw that caused it to rocket away unintentionally. This unintended acceleration was allegedly responsible for some pretty gruesome accidents and the lawsuits began pouring in. The only problem was nobody could find anything wrong with the car. Some blamed the transmission, others hypothesized the floor mats might be sliding around and pressing the gas. But the fact remained that even if the gas was pressed on accident, the brakes still should have been strong enough to stop the vehicle. After three years of this horrendous acceleration debacle, the NHTSA released a full report that exonerated Audi. Apparently, the entire thing was a hoax resulting from driver error. New Audi 5000 owners just weren't used to the European car's awkward pedal placement and often mixed up the gas and the brake, just like my golf cart blunders. Now, I want to go on record here, I might have crashed those two golf carts and one motorcycle, but I've still never been in a car accident, so technically, I'm a great driver. Subscribe if you would let me drive your golf cart. The Audi 5000 might have been hard for new drivers to manage, but it was nothing compared to the early Dodge Viper. The first generation RT10 made 400 horsepower from an 8 liter V10, which is nearly as much power as my motorcycle. If that's not scary enough, the Viper also had no traction control, no ABS, no stability control, no airbags, no door handles, no cup holders, and a side exit exhaust that had a habit of catching driver's pants on fire as they were getting out. You think I'm joking? Look it up. Now because of all this, some reporters labeled the original Viper as the most dangerous modern sports car, and the statistics backed them up. It was reported that, on average, the Viper cost insurance companies more per incident than any other vehicle on the road. If the Dodge Viper is a Widowmaker, then the Porsche 930 is a Reaper. Also known as the 911 Turbo, this forced induction hell spawn was introduced in the 70s, at a time when fuel efficiency was on a lot of buyers' minds. It started off with a 3-liter flat 6 placed behind the rear axle. This rear bias created a huge problem while cornering since it gave the car a tendency to snap oversteer and spin around. If that wasn't nasty enough, the turbocharger also introduced an insane amount of lag to the power band. 
At low RPMs, the 930 seemed tame enough to new buyers, but as soon as that blower spooled up, all 250 plus horsepower would be unleashed in an instant, surprising the uninitiated pilots into losing control and smashing into a tree. By the late 70s, the 930 was making 300 horsepower and could accelerate faster than the Lamborghini Countach. 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds, right into a ditch. But not every bad driver has Porsche levels of money to spend on a death machine. Well, I have good news for you. If you want the most destructive car on the planet to hurtle into a wall at max speed, well, it'll cost you less than 20 grand. Technically, actually, statistically, per capita on a functional level, if you go by the numbers, the Ford Mustang is the most dangerous sports car. According to IIHS, it holds the highest fatality rate in its class, and has for many years. This whole time, we thought it was just a meme, but it turns out giving inexperienced drivers a 3 to 400 horsepower rear wheel drive muscle car for dirt cheap, well, it isn't exactly the safest idea. Bonus car! The Zenvo ST1 caught on fire twice once during top gear testing and again during a Danish track event. Two times doesn't sound like a lot, but considering only 15 were made, that's 13% of them. Epic. <laughs>